If you're shooting in a small studio, much like I am now, getting, getting your equipment in place and getting everything you need and everything you want to be able to make the shot how you want it look can be quite a challenge. What's happening guys, Dan Debenham here. Today we're talking about shooting in a small area. Um, this studio, for instance, is only six foot by six foot or so, and it's a weird shape. It's sort of like got a right angle on it. Um, so it's not a full room, it's not a full square room, which makes it more difficult to shoot in because you've got certain angles that you can only shoot at. This is angle two of sort of two or three that I've got that I can shoot at if I absolutely need to. It's not the regular usable, us, usual angle that we shoot at. Normally has a set of sort of shelves at the side of me, behind me there. This has got a shelf across the back. Um, but shooting in a small space, um, that can can be a particular problem. So how do we go from this to this? Well, the way that we do it is we end up in a situation where we have to mask out all the equipment that we've got that we don't want in our shot. So for me, for instance, it would be this light here up in this back up at the back of me. This is just giving me some separation for the face and the shoulder, um, but I don't want that in shot. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mask that out. And the way that I do that is I make sure that I'm not crossing over into that area. I'm not going to move into that area um, and then I can get a clean mask out of it uh, and it's gone. But before I do that and I do all the masking, what I need to do is I need to take what's called a plate. Now a plate is basically a shot of your scene before all the stuff that you've got in there is put in place. It's done in visual effects. So they'll take a plate of a entire scene and then you might put wiring in or whatever and that's how you paint the wiring out. So for instance, you see somebody flying or you see something on a movie. Um, it's either done with a green screen where they put the visual in behind it. But if that's not possible, what they will do if they're doing it in real life, such as say on Mission Impossible or something like that, they will take a plate of that shot and then they'll paint that, all the accoutrements out. Um, and they'll take a plate of whoever it is, whatever actor it is, with all their gear on, but without all the harnessing and all the rest of it. And then they'll paint those out and they'll, mac they'll track that so that it, it basically keeps it as if he, he, were, he, he didn't have any equipment on him or she didn't have any equipment on her. Um, and that's how it's done. It's basically the same effect that we're going to do now, but on a much, much more simplified scale. So with that in mind, let's dive into uh, Premiere Pro and let's just see how we go ahead and do that. Now that we're in Premiere Pro and we've got our clips on our timeline, what we've actually got is we've got a clip here, which is this on the right hand side, which is the actual final video that you're going to want to use, except it's got this light in it, which is throwing across onto my face. And we want to rid of that light entirely because we don't want that in shot. On the left hand side here, we've got a plate, uh, which is this clip here. And this is a clip that's above our current video, our actual video. This has got a post, a post in it for me, like a post tube in it for me. That's basically to simulate me being in shot so I can get the blur from the camera being that this camera is all set up on auto focus, et cetera, et cetera, for when I'm talking and moving back and forth, it doesn't go out of focus. So in order to get some of that blur and do all this on my own, put a post in there just in order to be able to get the focus right on it. That's not going to be shown in the, in the, in the end result because that's going to be covered by me anyway. And we're also only masking out part of that. So first things first, what we're going to do is we're going to click on this clip here. We're going to click, make sure we've selected it. We're going to go to right click. So that's control click. Um, and we're going to add a frame hold. Um, and that's sorted that out. So what we can do now is we can actually make that as long as we want. So we can delete that first half. We don't need it. Um, and we can drag this over the top of our clip like so. So what we've currently got now is we've got this clip as we look at it. So you can do this one or two ways. You can do this with your clip above, or you can do it with your clip below. It's entirely your call. Um, I'm just gonna do it this way, just so that you can see how the operation actually works. So what we're gonna do is go up to effects controls, which is over here. We're gonna to go to opacity and we're gonna click on the pen tool. And then we know where roughly whereabouts we wanna start. So I'm going to just reduce this in size a little bit. So let's go to say 25%. 
Okay, I'm going to start around about here because I know roughly where I want to be and I'm just going to add in a load of points. Uh, and they're just random points these because I know roughly where my light is and I know roughly what I want it to look like. So I'm going to click in there like that now and now I have appeared. And you can see that light is now no longer there and from here what we can then do is just adjust our uh, mask out so that it covers the parts that we want it to cover. So for this instance, what I want to do is I want to just move this across. I want to make sure that I cover all the shadow so I don't get any shadows in the shot and I don't get anything that might be part of that uh, initial light. So we can move it all the way back over here. Look, as you can see there, you can see the shadow starts to come in. So I know the shadow is about there, so if I just put that there like that um, and then we can move this up because we know roughly that the shadow comes in there. So we can see where that is there, so I can bring that to there like so. I can then bring this up, further up and I can bring it in so I can see where that comes to. So we know that comes to there, so we want to be around about where that black mark is. So let's just put that there like so. We can then bring this in like this and we can see where the poles come into play which is roughly around over the top of that speaker so we'll just bring that across to that speaker like so and then we'll bring that back in like that. Okay so basically that is everything that you need to do. I've now basically got that there. You can still see there is a little bit of that there. So what you can do is you can just go back in, basically go back in very quickly and you can just adjust that mask ever so slightly so that it basically comes out a little bit further than it should. And that's because this mask is feathered by about 10%. You could also obviously uh, take the feather out of that mask entirely um, because you shot a plate so you don't necessarily need a feather. Um, because it's, it's exactly a copy, exact copy of what you've already got on your screen. Um, but we'll just move it across a little bit more just to make sure that we cover all bases and we get everything we want. We'll just have a look at it again, see what we're going with, and that's it, perfect. And basically, when we play that now, as we can see, I'm talking away and there is no uh, light in place at all, unless, of course, I just basically take that out altogether uh, so we'll just reduce that for you so you can see the light, put it back on again and you can see that the light is gone entirely. It's a pretty simple trick. It's really, really easy to do. It just means it gives you a little bit more leeway and a little bit more uh, of, a, of, a, of a, a bit of an angle that you can go to if you need to put equipment in your shot um, and you need to be able to get rid of it. Masking, it's got so many different uses. It's got so many different pluses to it. It's unbelievable. Um, and we'll touch a little bit more on more complex max masking in the future. But for this, it was just a, a quick, simple, dirty look at how we get to be able to use the equipment we've got, but still make our shot look something like, even though um, we've got all sorts of bits and bobs intruding into our shot, um, we can still get rid of all those and we can still sort everything out and it'll look something like at the end. Um, I hope it was useful. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope that you do get something out of it. Please do like and subscribe below. I can never remember whether it's left or right, whether I'm supposed to point. Um, but yeah, please do like and subscribe below and uh, uh, I will see you guys next time. Peace.